Hello everyone. Um, before I start, if you hear any weird noises in the background, it is because there's always construction going on outside my house. But um, I'm just gonna hope that they stop making noise for now. Um, but anyway, this time I'm going to talk about planning in our H2 chemistry advice series. Yeah. So, yeah, if you know that you know that planning, a uh, practical isn't all about experiments, you know. Even if you like doing experiments, you also have to write stuff. You, you have to actually fill up some paper <laughs> in front of you, which one of the questions or two of them may have planning in it. So, yeah, you will have approximately 30 minutes worth of planning in your A-levels, that's for sure. So... Um, I think this is usually how they do it. They they like to put a separate question, which is a planning, and it could be anything. It can be like titration or energetics or kinetics or any kind of experiment that they can do. And then there will be one which is attached to the QA, which will usually be asking about organic QA because it tends to be harder to do that on, you know, experimentally or hands-on because of how some organic substances are somewhat toxic and also because we may not actually know all the know how to experimentally do some of the techniques in organic QA so this is quite limited in experiment but they will ask you in the planning question that is attached to a QA but it may be a bit different for your own A level so I don't know <laughs> Um, so now I'm going to talk about each of the possible planning questions that they can ask and what you would want to take note of. Okay, so the first one, um, titration. Of course, titration, you will need to do pre-calculations most of the times because they will tell you to do some dilution or something with that, with that the graduated flask or something. The thing that you can turn upside down and do that eight times. Yeah, that thing. Actually, I didn't talk about that in the titration video. Oh no. But if you want to, if you want me to talk about it, you can ask it below and maybe I will, if I do a Q&A video, I will talk about it. Okay. So, um, in the pre-calculation, you have to take note of the volume or the, like if you're using liquids or if you're using solid and you're adding it to water, you must think, you must, you know, take, you must, calculate what how much you want to add in and things like that because you know in titration you need to make sure that when you're titrating your the volume that you add is going to be in between um about actually about around 20 to 25 you don't want it to be too little with lesser than 10 or too, too much which is more than 30 because otherwise that's going to make your titration hard. So you must think about it practically even though you're writing it down and you don't have to actually do it. So yeah. Um so just do all the pre calculations first. Do it quick do it quickly. I think if you practice enough you will be able to do this quickly. And for the main plan you just need to I'm pretty sure the schools would probably give you some template or something like model answers so you can memorize some of the parts of that answer and then plug in all the re relevant details like for example the size of the measuring cylinder and things like that and depending on whether you need to do a pre-dilution making a sample solution you might you can sh you can write it or you can don't have to write it it depends on the scenario that you're given so I think this shouldn't be too hard to write down, especially if you're used to looking at questions by the, by the time you come to A-levels, you'll be pretty sure of what you're supposed to do, hopefully. <laughs> Titration is pretty simple, straightforward. It's just you add one thing to another thing. <laughs> there isn't anything super complicated to write down. So, But sometimes they may ask you to write down a plan for sampling because you know they don't want to torment you with actually doing that experimentally maybe they want to torment you by making you write about it so for that you may need to draw a table or something then to, or, and tell which time intervals you want to extract the aliquots and quench it and do all that stuff so just remember how to 
just remember those particular aspects of titration and remember what you would need to write for each of those aspects and you know just plug it in as you need to it's like for example you have a phone and you need to inst if, if you want a certain functionality you install an app like that you just plug things in as you need it yeah I do not know why I bothered to give such an analogy but okay um, then the next time uh, the next type which actually I didn't really talk about this in the other episodes which is the thing where you're supposed to heat cool and weigh something like I'm not exactly sure which thing it is lumped under. Hmm. It would probably be like QA sometimes, or it could be if it's the full heat cool way thing to measure the like the first like how much how much how many water molecules are attached to that thing or something, the percentage of water or something. Yeah. So I like it. This is actually pretty straightforward too. You just need to memorize the format of the answer and then just change it according to what solid you're using. Or, um, yeah, I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> and also just remember why you would need to use the crucible or why crucibles are preferred to boiling tubes and things like that. So just remember things like that for this particular um experiment. So the next kind would be the kinetics and the energetics experiments and um, yeah, this is where there will be a bit more variation of the different ways you can write it and I think for that you just have to go through all the solutions. I just hope your school gives good solutions. Yeah, just go through all of them and um, find a way of just find some con common ground or find your own way of trying to remember the different aspects. Like how for titration you need to plug in certain things. You would probably need to do the same thing here. And once again for the pre-calculation, take note of how much uh, you know, solid or liquid or any reagents that you will need before you, s before you start writing down your procedure. And um, for any of the and in general, for any of the experiments, there might be something, there might be some reactions which are like redox reactions or something, which require acidification, like uh, sulfuric acid or something like that. Usually sulfuric acid, but anyway, um, and you would need to calculate how much acid you need for it to be in a sufficient amount for the reaction to go go well without it being limited by the acid because you do not want it to be limited by the acid <laughs> and um, yeah so you would you need to calculate how much you would need for in terms of the limiting reagents or in terms of acid and yeah for this channel you probably need a lot of acid it's alkaline uh, okay that was a terrible joke now let's move on <laughs> um, yeah so if you have trouble remembering what you need to write which can happen there's like certain there's a lot of weird weird variations that you you probably might need to remember especially for the sampling you may not really remember the details as much um there's, if you're really desperate just just calm down and then imagine yourself doing the experiment i'm pretty sure that's easier than remembering a bunch of words i'm pretty sure that's how memorization can be made easier, you just visualize it. So you visualize yourself doing it and write it in that order. So, But honestly, uh, I think most people should be able to remember <laughs> the word to some extent and just fill in the rest as, you know, with whatever eloquence of language they have, they can just fill it up. It shouldn't be too hard. Um, but if you have really terrible memory, which I guess I can relate, but Sorry, but uh, but if you have really terrible memory, you can um, imagine it. It it will actually help your memory a bit, I think. But uh, don't worry about it too much. Don't nitpick over memorizing all of this instead of practicing for your actual uh, papers, the other papers. I think you sh as long as you get a good number of points, you will be fine. I think, especially if you do the other parts really well, it doesn't matter if you screw this up a little bit. Just don't screw it up a lot. So, 
yeah, of course, um, I will talk about the general balance you would want in the last epi- uh, the next and the last episode. So, I'll tell you more about that later. So, yeah, so now I will talk about the QA, right, which is usually attached to your QA question at the back. So, um, the two kinds which I am very fam- which I'm familiar with, which one is just they just give you like five organic reagents, and they allow you to use some bench chemicals, and um, identify the reagent. You can also use the reagents themselves. So, in this case, it's just organic chemistry theory, I guess. It just remember a lot of theory. It's very important. Theory, theory, theory. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you you need to quick. You need to do some quick thinking and uh, yeah, that will come with, with practice and with a good knowledge of the theory. And by good knowledge, I don't mean memorize. I mean internalize in your head. Like don't just memorize it and then you don't know what you're doing. Because if you if you'd simply memorize, it is help. It may be helpful for your questions in your exam because you can actually see the information written there. But in this case, you may not really pop up on your head immediately so you might want to internalize it um i i guess i guess you don't have to only worry about that because it will come with practices closer to the a level your memory will suddenly become a lot better (laughs) so yeah don't worry about that and uh yeah so the second kind which could involve some inorganic chemicals like certain acids like head sheet a HCl or NaOH and there will be five reagents and you have nothing else you cannot use any other reagent maybe they may give you one thing but you don't have any other stuff to test what they are and in order to find out what these reagents are you have to mix them together all you know is that the five of them are this certain bunch of reagents you have to identify which is which yeah so in this case, it is quick thinking once again, and yeah, it's the same as the first one. You just need to um, internalize all your theory and then make some connections between organic and inorganic chem. And um, yeah, in this case, you if you really cannot think about it at first glance, you can do your do some other question and then come back to it. Because honestly, if you take too long to do it. <laughs> You don't. You'll be wasting your time, of course. So, um, yeah. So, in terms of time management, don't in you know the overall time management. Don't spend more than thirty minutes here, um, because technically, your you know the idea is that you have thirty minutes to do this. Even though you can do everything in that two and a half hours, you have thirty minutes to do first specifically this thing so you have to do it while wait you can do it while waiting for things to filter or something like that if you're able to access the question and um, if you're really stumped like what I just told earlier um, don't don't stay there for too long just realize that you are actually stumped and you know move on do a different question fill up your calculations or whatever you need to do and then come back to it later because if you do all your other things well and even if you screw this up, you will still get a good grade. So I think it's better to do what you're really sure of first and then come and finish the other stuff in the end. Once you're really sure of everything else, you can spend as much time as you want doing this. So in other words, the TLDR of this is don't waste your time. Every minute is precious, so strategize and you know do it well. And talking about strategizing, the next and final video will be about the overall process as well as um, overall strategies for the entire practical, including uh, planning. So I'm not exactly sure what I would have to say there, but I think um, <coughs> probably run through the generally what happens on that day because you only usually get to know this near the A level. If you really want to know about it, I guess, um, yeah, and also what you what strategies you would want when you study or when you're when you're actually doing it on that day, 
and afterwards if anyone asks any questions or if maybe I can go to Reddit and ask for people to ask me questions then I will make a video covering these questions and answers yeah um, as always I hope that you know you found this useful and you enjoyed this and if you did um, please press like and subscribe to this channel and um, the next series is the GP series and I hope you guys enjoy that as well so uh, yeah thank you and bye